Good morning. Welcome to OldStMary's.com, a ministry of Old St. Mary's Parish in the South Loop of Chicago, where today we celebrate Monday of the second week of Advent. It's also for those celebrating the Feast of St. Nicholas. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Declare it to the distant lands. Behold, our Savior will come. You need no longer fear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we gather in prayer, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may our prayer of petition rise before you, that with purity unblemished, we, your servants, may come as we desire to celebrate the great mystery of the incarnation of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf <coughs> excuse me, be cleared, then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The abode where jackals herd will be a marsh for the reed and the papyrus. A highway will be there called the Holy Way. No one unclean may pass over it, nor fools go astray on it. No lion will be there, nor beast of prey go up to be met upon it. It is for those who journey who, with a journey to make, and on it the redeemed will walk. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. O 
our God will come to save us. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. Alleluia, alleluia. Behold, the king will come, the Lord of the earth, and he himself will lift the yoke of our captivity. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One day as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village in Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there, and the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed, and they were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence. But not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on a stretcher through the tiles into the middle in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, As for you, your sins are forgiven. And then the scribes and Pharisees began to ask themselves, Who is this who speaks these blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? And Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in reply, what are you thinking in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He stood up immediately before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home, glorifying God. Then astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God. And struck with awe, they said, We have seen incredible things today. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the common links between our first reading from Isaiah and this reading from the Gospel is the, the fact that extraordinary things happen whenever God mixes with human beings. It is this realization throughout the season of Advent that the world is trying to get ready for the Savior, but wasn't quite there yet. <clears throat> but our goal was to get ready, to be more prepared. And ever since Christ's first coming in time, we still have that same goal. We are still trying to ready our hearts. We are still trying to ready ourselves still trying to figure out what does it mean to realize all that Jesus is capable of doing here in our midst. So if the kids were here this morning, I would be talking a little more about St. Nicholas. But I will still say a little bit about St. Nicholas because uh, I don't know if you know this, if you've turned on a TV any time lately, there are all kinds of Santa stories out there. And the, the quirky thing about all that <clears throat> is we know that within the church, the whole Santa Claus imagery started with a saint. The, the saint's name was Nicholas. He lived in the 300s. He was, uh, he was a great bishop. And when you read the descriptions of him as a great bishop, you understand he wasn't just great in terms of being pastoral and how he cared for his people. You know, the, the stories of, of his sainthood talk about uh, how he healed people, how he 
helped uh, people to uh, overcome poverty and the, the situations they found themselves in their lives. But as a bishop, he was also an extremely smart man. And he was involved with the church in discussing who is Jesus? Is he God? Is he human? And coming to the great understanding that he is both human and divine completely. So Nicholas is this wonderful guy who proclaimed the message of Christ. And when I see all these different stories of Santa Claus and all that, it's, it's really nice that Santa Claus does these nice things and, and brings things to people. But the St. Nicholas side of Santa Claus would say, but don't forget about Jesus. Don't forget to keep looking at Jesus. Santa would say, my whole reason for being here is to point you to Jesus. You know, it, it's that understanding that Christ's life touches ours and what he's capable of doing gives us the energy to be ministers to one another. So if you encounter Santa Claus today, maybe ask, what was the beginning of this? What was the holiness of Nicholas that caused people to say, this guy needs to be proclaimed a saint? And he was. And may the blessings of Saint Nicholas help us to understand more completely the blessings of Christ and how he is at work in our midst and in our hearts. Let us raise our prayers. We pray for the church during this season of Advent that our progress in the ways of faith may be contagious to many others. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who lead and govern our world that they will make right decisions and know how to empower their people. We pray to the Lord. For all who have asked us for prayers, all those for whom we have promised to pray, those who have no one to pray for them, and those people at crossroads in their lives today, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are dealing with illness, especially those dealing with the coronavirus, those working to overcome the coronavirus, and healing for all those who have it, we pray to the Lord. We remember at this point uh, the people who are joining us online today and what prayers they may be offering. For all of these prayers, we pray to the Lord. And for all of our dear departed, all those known to us, those we don't not yet know about, and for all departed souls, we pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, accept our prayers that we place before you with confidence through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of earth, work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. Let's be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
O Lord, accept these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also Bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with Saint Nicholas, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace 
will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Taught by our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall.
Let us pray. O Lord, may these mysteries in which we have participated profit us, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, someone told me that Patrick Sharon has a birthday today. Is that true? Is that a yes or an that's a yes. So happy birthday to Patrick Sherman. <laughs> to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Patrick. Happy birthday to you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now to share the love of Christ.